All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Okay, today, um, let's take a look at building a virtual set. Now, if you only have five minutes, <laughs> I love you, but go away, all right, because you're not going to learn anything in five minutes. But this tutorial, I'm going to try and get to it as quick as we can, just taking a look at creating a virtual set. Now, this was sort of a, a challenge for a... Uh, just creating a virtual set for an advertisement, for a magazine advertisement, okay? And essentially what I wanted to do is just create some textures, some preliminary stuff, um, go with the texture. The idea was like a, a backlit moonlight kind of industrial, you know, workshop uh, with some stuff going on or a product to be placed, you know, somewhere in here. Okay, now... What I wanted to do is do this as quickly as possible, and uh, that was pretty easy to do. Just I modeled some simple objects, you know, out of cubes, uh, attached some wood textures to them. Uh, the ground right here is just a, you know, generic texture. I don't know what the hell it is, but <laughs> anyway, it's there. And that was about it. And just two lights, one directional light coming in from the back to give us these nice, you know, backlit shadows. And then, um, you know, one spotlight to kind of illuminate this interior area. Okay, so what I wanted to do was start in Photoshop first, because my primary texture is this, this, you know, brick wall with the window. And I needed to get some transparency in the background here. And in order to see what kind of transparency I'm getting, I needed to put some reference objects back here. And this sort of shows me what that directional light is doing as it's coming in through the windows from the background there. So these are neither here nor there right now, but they're great and useful as reference objects. And if I were an art director, I would immediately point out in this um, overall scene is that, you know, I want to see a little bit more detail under here. I don't want to see such a hard shadow. I'd rather see this softened up a bit, and I'd rather see a little bit of bluish illumination here, as well as over here, I might say, well, as an art director, I'd say, well, yeah, let's bring this out a little bit more around here and through here and just sort of do a drop off uh, of light so that we can kind of bluish light so we can kind of see what, you know, the, the, the wall is here. But and maybe add some molding down here and maybe break up these surfaces up here so they're not so linear. Um, it's a workshop and industrial, so these shouldn't be as, as straight and, you know, crisp as they are, these edges. Okay. So that's just a few of the things I'd probably look at and say, yeah, let's change that. Okay, but let me show you the scene real quick. Um, it's so simple. I mean, come on, let's take a look at it. Um, I have basically, you know, my backlit objects I just placed back here behind the windows. I have one light that's the directional light, and it's coming in from sort of directly that location. Okay, so I've, I've scaled it up, and I can see exactly what it's doing. And this is my uh, spotlight, okay? And I adjusted the cone angle and the penumbra angle a bit, and I turned off the emit specular, and I gave it a little bit of color because, you know, the composition and texturing and everything's going to make a big difference. So anyway, that's as simple as it gets, okay? So let's move on to step two. What I did is I took a close look at this texture in Photoshop, and here's what it looks like in Photoshop. Uh, Let's see if I can bring that up. Basically, this was the image I started with. And, you know, that's my background image right here. Um, but essentially what I did is I'm going to put a black background in there so we can see what I did. I just basically made a copy of that background and cut out all of these, you know, little individual window panes. So we don't have glass there anymore. And that gives me a, a pure reference of seeing through the glass. Next, what I did is I just took this background, um, original background, and I made a copy of it, and then I cut out the window portion, okay? And when I cut that window portion out, I'm going to go back here, I lowered it to 63 uh, on its opacity, but I just basically cut that window section out and put it below this background copy. So now if I see that I have the background copy, I can take my background right there, and I can reduce the opacity, you know, maybe like I had it at 63. So that's about what it, what it was. Now, if I put in the black background there, you can see where, you know, there's transparency because I can see the checkerboard pattern in Photoshop. And when I turn this one on, 
now you can see where there's a bit of there's a bit of opacity there okay you want to see in and out of the windows so by you know carefully adjusting this to the fill there all I did then was just save this as a PNG okay so just go to file and save as whatever you want to save it as switch it up to a PNG the magical PNG okay no big deal <laughs> okay so anyway once I did that I had a PNG image that would let me just sort of attach this to a plane in Maya so essentially that's what I did is I set up in Maya let's see if we can find Maya I set this image up on a plane all right and then I just duplicated it and put it on both planes all right so that's about it for that and also what I did is on that um, Lambert I'm gonna just graph the in and output connections there I did make a normal map okay and attach that as a bump to that Lambert okay so that's you know neither here nor there but at least if you know about a normal map making it a bump map and then when you do make it a bump map make sure that you switch it up to tangent normals it'll normally come in as a bump map but make sure you switch that to tangent space normals because that just uh, assigns the proper values to that um, normal map easy okay so that was all I did there and basically that was it now the next thing you have to look at is your lighting um, when you bring this PNG image in by establishing a little bit of opacity in Photoshop and saving it as a PNG you don't really run into the problems that you do with trying to do a, an alpha mat and this and that and the other thing so this is just a very quick way of sort of getting some transparency in an area in an image okay so it, it only works in certain cases and there you have it so <laughs> anyway it's perfectly suitable for what I want to do here okay so that was it there now if I switch it up to some various angles right here I noticed that my lighting was sort of throwing a shadow over you know one of the the spherical objects I have in here outside the window so by moving that out quite a bit or just you know getting rid of it completely um, I got a render that gives me something like that okay so that kind of gives you a nice kind of diffused moon through a window dirty window yeah, and yeah that's about it okay so there you have it um, let me go over here and take a look at what where I left off now once you get everything set up you want to dial in your lights and you want to pay attention to sort of what those lights are doing this light is throwing a shadow down in here okay and that's cool and all and you know I may want to check my other lights and say well I either want this to throw shadows or I don't um, in this case I do so I'm gonna leave it like that but let's take a look at getting some illumination to you know the under portions of the these areas I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn on my point lights uh, I had them turned off for now but I did have let's see if we can show selection I did have some point lights in here and this one sort of illuminates everything I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard and find out where that's at okay so it's way up there and I don't really want it up there I don't want to see that light right now so I'm just gonna hide that again and I'm gonna go down to my other point light um, there's a point light three and that one is underneath that's where I was talking about those shadows that are going to show up underneath this bench okay so point light three i'll go ahead and display i'll turn that back on there we go and you can see where i have it uh, throwing a bluish kind of hue all over the place but really i want to localize it right here so this is a perfect case of using your light linker so if you go up into your window and go to relationship editors and come down into your light linking and we want to make it no oh, let's make it light centric okay I'm gonna call that up a little window on my other monitor over there pops up and I can now see where I have you know some various options here this is point light shape 3 and I don't want it to affect um, this plane in particular okay which is on my plane shape 4 I don't want it affecting this which is my cube shape 3 and uh, yeah so let's 
take the cube shape three and and delete that just by clicking on it and let's take this plane which was my plane shape four and let's find that in here plane shape plane shape four there it is and we'll take that off okay now i can sort of just close out of my light linker come over here and let's see kind of what effect that's having now i have about a 25 second render time on here okay so i'm just going to save that render but i'll i'll do a 25 second render and just we'll see what we got and i'm going to push pause and come back to this when it's done all right well i can see that you know the blue is having an effect overall on some of these other areas so i'm going to take this blue and i'll probably move this light around a bit to sort of you know get get something that i like from there and i may want to look at this shadow too and 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 really you know scrutinize what's happening with this shadow and this shadow is being caused by the spotlight coming down on top of this table and throwing a crisp shadow across the wall so in that case, I may want to take a quick look at my spotlight, come down into the shadows and vary those up a little bit. Right now I'm using ray trace shadows and I, I don't have much of a light radius. There's zero light radius. So use this sparingly. Um, I'm going to go for like a, a 0.5. All right. I'm going to bring my shadow rays up to like four. I don't know. I, we don't really need to worry about that yet. But let's come over here take a look at what happened to that and i'm going to go ahead and, and save this and then i'll do another render and i'll come back real quick and push this pause on this all right so i don't see much of a change there yet in the render so i'll go ahead and, and maybe keep moving this up from like say 0 0.5 to like a light radius of five now uh, let's go yeah, let's do five for an extreme, okay? And I'll go ahead and do another render. Okay, you can see where that has, has sort of softened up the shadow. Um, it's a little grainy, but, you know, that's kind of to be expected from kind of using this method. And we can dial it in further with our render settings, but this just gives you an idea of what that light radius uh, does, okay? So, gosh, I think that's about it. I mean literally there's not much to throwing together a scene on a virtual set real quick and coming up with something that um you know is is pleasing and and easy to do very quick so your uh your boss will be happy <laughs> okay so there it is a couple of lights a texture uh png texture with a little bit of transparency and uh, a couple of lights all right so hey I hope you learned something just by seeing this uh, in action and you go ahead and go out and create your own virtual sets and um, have fun with it. All right. And until the next one, um, as always, be a good person, uh, of course, and uh, and read a book, uh, preferably the owner's manual to Maya. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for watching.